spark of light into the void The shadows ran away from your voice In the darkness now I'm falling to my knees Will you speak that same voice to me? From emptiness you speak life At your voice the blind began to see And the lame can walk, the captives are set free A hardened heart can finally start to feel Will you speak that same voice to me? Perhaps the Lord, you made beauty Hi there, we're so delighted to introduce to you our free church app. Uh, this app is loaded with features and resources that will greatly enrich your life. So head out to the app or Google Play stores, search for All People's Church Bangalore and download the app right now. It's going to greatly enrich your journey with God. Words. It's a combination of choices and collective voices. For me, it started as a little kid with the first word uttered, Mama. My words began to take shape. I grew, my words grew, my words grew. Chit chat, lines, lyrics, tweets. Aw, that's so sweet. Words began to make me, my world of words began to break me. Sisters, parents, exes, spouse kept assuring me. That's pointless, that's useless, that's hopeless. I'm worthless. The boss says it best. It's not personal, it's just business. But that's not true. Not true. Worthless? I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I am a royal diadem in his hand. I am precious in his sight. For he knows the plans he has for me. Plans to perfect me. Words. It's a combination of choices and collective voices. It has the power 
of life and death. Greetings and thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Living Strong. As always, it's our joy and delight to come your way and bring God's Word to you and spend this time with you in the Word and in prayer. Over the next few weeks, we want to spend some time talking about uh, an important topic or theme that we see in Scripture, and it's about words. The influence that the words that the words we speak have over our own lives and how God uh, desires for us to use our words. You know, when we look at creation, when we look at the world all around us that God has created and God has designed, He has put uh, specific things in place. Uh, For instance, take the law of gravity. You know, it's it's part of creation. It's part of nature. And uh, we don't have anything to... uh, We we can't do anything to control it. But what we can is uh, we can understand how it works and we can then leverage it for our benefit. Or, you know, if we don't uh, handle it properly, it could be uh, uh, to our detriment. And like that, there are several other things in creation, in the natural world around us that that are part of the design, uh, that are part of what God has created. And it's for us to discover how those work and then begin to leverage them for our advantage. The same thing when it comes to spiritual things. One of the things that we see in Scripture that God has put in place is the power of our words how we are to use our words for our own benefit, for causing effect both in the natural and the spiritual realm, and also how we use our words to bless others. And so we want to explore this whole subject over the next several weeks. And we begin by just talking about some essentials that God has put in His Word concerning words. And so we entitled this episode, Watch your words. We begin by uh, looking at James chapter 3, verses 1 to 10. Uh, James, the half-brother of our Lord Jesus Christ, he's uh, uh, the author there of, uh, James chapter, uh, of the book of James. And there in James chapter 3, verses 1 to 10, he says this. He says, My brethren, let not many of you become teachers, knowing that we shall receive a stricter judgment. For we all stumble in many things. If anyone does not stumble in word, he is a perfect man, able also to bridle the whole body. Notice what he says. He says, if you can control your words, in other words, if you can uh, control your tongue or tame your tongue, he says, then you're able to actually tame your whole body. You're able to gain mastery over your whole body. So our ability to Uh, control our words, to control our tongue and what we speak uh, in some way uh, describes our ability to control the rest of our person, our our whole being. Then moving on there in verse 3, he says, Indeed, we put bits in horses' mouths that they may obey us and we turn their whole body. Look also at ships. Although they are so large and are driven by fierce winds, they are turned by a very small rudder wherever the pilot desires. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. See how great a forest a little fire kindles. Now, in order to get our attention and in order to help us understand the influence that the tongue has, meaning the words we speak, um, the, the tongue has on our whole person, uh, the, James draws several comparisons. First, he looks at the horse and he says, you know, the horse is such a powerful animal, full of strength, energy, and yet the horse is controlled with a little bit in its mouth. And the, the rider on the horse can control it, can dictate how he wants the horse to, uh, to go, uh, which direction he wants the horse to go, by just pulling on that little bit in the horse's mouth. And then he draws a second comparison. He says, look at those big ships on the sea. Uh, They are so huge and and they are carried on those waves uh, on the sea. But the ship is controlled by a little rudder. 
and the pilot turns the rudder in the direction uh, he wants the ship to go. And then he looks at the fire, a little fire that starts off in a forest. And that little fire can actually destroy an entire forest. And with these three comparisons, James says, that's how powerful our tongue is. The tongue seems so small in a physical organ as part of our body. Yet the words that come out of our mouth have such a great impact, such a great influence on our own lives. And so Paul is saying, you know, the words we speak, they can control our lives. They control the energies of our lives. They control the direction of our lives. And they can even have a destructive effect on our lives, just like how the fire you know, can destroy a huge forest. And so we pick up there in verse 6, and he says, The tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. The tongue is so set among our members that it defiles the whole body and sets on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire by hell. Now, James is talking about an evil tongue, a bad tongue, a tongue that, you know, spouts out the wrong kinds of words. So he's talking about an evil tongue, and he then begins to describe what inspires an evil tongue and the effect an evil tongue has on our whole person. He says the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So uh, an evil tongue, that is, uh, that is a, a tongue that is full of sin, that speaks the wrong kinds of words, speaks destructive words, evil words, words of unbelief. So he's talking about that kind of a tongue, which is under the influence of a world of sin that is controlled by sin, controlled by the present evil. And he says, this tongue is really set on fire by hell. So really, the source of those words of sin actually draw inspiration from hell. It has a wicked source, an evil source. And this kind of a tongue, what does it do? Uh, it, being set among our members, it defiles the whole body. This evil tongue actually damages, actually has a destructive influence on our entire physical body is what he says. The wrong words we speak actually are detrimental to our physical body, whether it's our physical health, whether it's our emotional health, uh, whatever, whatever goes on in our person, these wrong words, these evil words begin to affect our whole person. And then he says, it sets on fire the course of nature, meaning it not only affects me as a person, but it also affects the entire course of my life. And if you look up other versions of that verse, they will bring that meaning out, that, that this evil tongue, the evil words we speak, have an evil impact on the entire course of our life. So they not only have a detrimental effect on who we are as individuals, but the wrong words we speak also have a negative impact, an evil influence, and a, a destructive effect on the entire journey that we are about to make. So can you imagine the words we speak uh, can actually impact our entire lives? Now, sometimes we don't realize it. You know, we take our words very casually. We say all kinds of things. Uh, we speak negative things about ourselves. You know, we sometimes speak so low about ourselves. We speak um, uh, uh, words that, uh, you know, are, are, are pathetic. They, 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 give, um, they describe us in a very wrong way and all of that. And we, we, don't take, uh, we don't think that those words have much impact on our lives. We treat them very flippantly and, uh, uh, you know, we just think they're just words, they're empty. But really what we must understand, as, as James teaches us here, is that the words we speak, every kind of word, has impact on who we are as individuals and also on the very course of our lives. What is setting up, what sets up, uh, what is set up for us in the future. Our words begin to describe the future that we are actually journeying into. Now, this is something God has set in place. So we need to take that seriously. Now, I want us to think about this. James is describing an evil tongue. And he says this is a world of sin, and an evil tongue is actually set on fire by hell. But on the other, other side, what about a good tongue? A good tongue is a world of righteousness. It's, it's a tongue that speaks the right kinds of words. And a, a good tongue is a tongue 
that is set on fire by the word of God. That means the word of God begins to influence the words that come out of our mouth. And what will such kind of, of a tongue do? Meaning, what will such kind of good words that we speak, words that are influenced by the word of God itself, what will that do? It will, of course, bless our person. It will bless our body. It will bless our emotions. It will bless who we are as individuals. And such words can actually have a positive influence on the journey that we make in life. So if we begin uh, consciously, purposely, to speak words that are set on fire by the Word of God, that means they originate, they are under the influence of the Word of God, they are aligned to what God has said in His Word concerning us, concerning our future, concerning who we are, concerning what He has promised us, and we begin to speak those kinds of words, they are, that is a tongue that's a world of righteousness, that is speaking words that are wholesome, healthy, positive, full of life, and those words will actually create a very positive future that we can journey into. The entire course of our life will be set on fire or be brought under the influence of such words. Just like how a powerful horse is controlled by a simple bit in its mouth. Just, how, just as how a powerful ship, a huge ship on the sea, is controlled and directed by a little rudder that determines the direction in which that ship goes. Just as how a great forest could be destroyed by a simple fire and set on fire by, that, by a fire that takes place in the forest. He says, our words can have such a big impact on our lives. And if we choose to speak positive words, we are releasing positive things into our future. And we just begin to journey, it, journey into it. Now let's look at some other scriptures in the Bible that corroborate this truth, that actually bring this truth out to us. Proverbs the 18th chapter, verses 20 and 21. It says, Here a man's stomach shall be satisfied from the fruit of his mouth, and from the produce of his lips he will be filled. That means your inner person. So he's not just talking about your physical organ, stomach, but your inner person is being affected by what is coming out of your mouth. And then he says in verse 21, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. Can you imagine? He's saying, you know, matters as, uh, that are so important as death and life are under the control of our tongue. Our words control, our words have impact on death and life. So when somebody is speaking destructive things over their own life, you know, I will amount to nothing. I don't think I'm going to make it. I don't think my life is going to be very successful. I don't, I don't think I'm going to be, uh, ever be happy in life. You know, my life is a mess. My life is so miserable. When we speak those negative words, we are causing death. We are speaking destruction into our life, into our world. And that's exactly what we're going to have. Both our inner person is going to be affected by those words and the journey we make in life are going to be shaped by those words. Death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat its fruits. Those who choose to speak good words, positive words, words full of life, will enjoy the fruits, the benefit of speaking those words. Proverbs 12 and verse 14 says, A man will be satisfied with good by the fruit of his mouth. What comes out of your mouth is going to determine what you're going to enjoy in life. Proverbs 12 verse 18, There is one who speaks like the piercings of a sword, but the tongue of the wise promotes health. The tongue of the wise, a person who chooses his words carefully, wisely, the tongue of the wise promotes health. Can you imagine health, our physical well-being, our emotional well-being is influenced by the words we speak. And you know, the world around us, psychology, psychologists, are, give, give us that same kind of information. They say, you know, speak words of affirmation, self, affirm yourself, uh, speak words of self-affirmation. Uh, and they basically tell us, you speak good words, you speak positive words. But this is exactly what is taught in the Word of God, that if you and I can speak 
words that are um, good, we choose our words wisely, we can actually promote or build up our own health, our physical and spiritual well-being. Proverbs 15 verse 4, it says, A wholesome tongue is a tree of life, but perverseness in it breaks the spirit. A wholesome tongue, a tongue that speaks good words, um, a positive words, healthy words. What does it do? A wholesome, wholesome tongue is a tree of life. The tree of life is just a picture of healing and wholeness and well-being. We see it in the book of Genesis. We also see it in the last chapter in the book of Revelation. A tree of life whose leaves are for the healing of the nations. So the tree of life represents health, healing, well-being. So a wholesome tongue, speaking wholesome words, healthy words, positive words, good words, kind words, are bring health to our own person. But perverseness in it, that means uh, speaking destructive words, negative words, harsh words, they actually crush your spirit, your own person. You know, when you say things like, you know, I, I don't think I'm really going to be able to do it. I don't think I'm going to fare well in this exam. I don't think I'm going to do well in this interview. I don't think I'm going to, you know, really be successful. They actually weaken your inner person. They weaken your inner resolve. They weaken your courage. They weaken your confidence. But when you speak words like, I believe I can do it. I believe God is with me and he will help me. The Lord is my confidence. Through Christ, I can do all things. And you speak wholesome words. You speak healthy words, positive words. They invigorate. They strengthen. They build up your inner person. They actually enrich your confidence and they boost your confidence so that you can face whatever you're facing uh, with strength, with confidence. And... Uh, and, and not only do, do the words we speak affect ourselves and affect our future, but the words we speak actually affect the people that we speak them to. In other words, we can actually have a positive influence or a negative influence on people around us. And so in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29, uh, Paul says, Let no corrupt communication, a word, proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification that it may impart grace to the hearers. That means words that I speak can actually build up, edify. It can lift somebody else up and it can bring grace into their lives. It can bring empowering into their lives. The words we speak can lift other people around us. So just by choosing the right words, the, the, the correct words, words that are full of life, words that are encouraging, we can lift people up and strengthen them and impart grace into their lives. So what we've done today is just, you know, explored a few verses in Scripture where God is telling us, watch your words. Use your words carefully. Your words have an impact on your being, on who you are as a person. Your words are actually shaping your life. You're going to rise up to the level of your speaking or you're going to go down to the level of your speaking. If you want your life to rise up, Choose to speak positive words. Choose to speak good words. Now, the reason you can do that is because you're basing what you're saying on the promises of God. And we will get to that in the upcoming episodes as we talk about how we can use our words to shape our life and how we choose our words carefully, how we can use our words to release our faith, how we can use our words to actually exercise authority in the earth and exercise authority in the spiritual realm. All these things are possible by us using our words carefully. So, watch your words. Some of us need to have a complete change in our speaking, in the way we speak. We need to make a choice that we are going to speak positive words about ourselves, about our future, and we're going to speak positive words to other people to lift them up and to minister grace into their lives. I have a calling to be salt and light. I'm part of a family that empowers me to fulfill this commission. I have a job, but then I was always passionate to study the word. We are students from different walks of life. My potential is best tapped in an environment like this. Where I get the opportunity to reach out and to minister. A culture where there's supernatural impartation through anointed leaders. 
I can now aim for excellence because that is God's beautiful design. I am equipped to impact. Come. Discover. Fulfill. The ABC Babu College offers a two-year diploma course in English and short-term courses in other regional languages. For inquiries about the course and other details, please do get in touch with us on our toll-free number, mobile number or landline number. You can also email us at contact at abcwo.org. You can download the application form from our website abcwo.org slash Bible College. Thank you so much for being with us on the program today as we began exploring what the Bible teaches us on the power of our words and the power of our tongue and how to use our words rightly. Uh, we are going to explore this subject further in the weeks to come. So stay with us, tell your friends about it. Uh, make sure you tune in. Before we close, let's take some time just to pray together. And I want you to believe God with me as I pray for God's working in your life, pray for God's healing, pray for God's miracle. I pray for a release of God's anointing to come in and touch you. I want you to agree with me. I want you to believe God with me that things will happen in your life as we pray. Let's pray together. Father, right now, thank you for every person who's tuned in uh, to this program, who's heard the message. I want to pray, Father, for each one of them. Father, I pray for the power of your Holy Spirit to touch their lives. I pray for the release of your presence and your glory upon them. And I pray, God, and I speak healing into their lives. I speak encouragement. And in the name of Jesus, I break off every evil influence on their lives, every negative thing affecting their minds, telling them that they will not amount to anything, every negative word of the enemy, every accusation, every condemnation, every fear. I release their minds from it. And I release, God, the work of your Spirit upon them, bringing healing, bringing miracles into their lives. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for being with us on the program. And until next time, remember, live life to Jesus' way.